when the Buddha describes mindfulness practice, there's one stage where he talks about being aware of body, feelings, mind, or dhammas, both internally and externally. What this means is that what you discover inside yourself, you can apply to other people. And what you see in other people, you can turn around and apply to yourself. Even before you meditate, it's a good principle to think about other people. In Thai, they have the phrase, to put somebody else's heart in your heart. In other words, you think about what they may be feeling. You learn how to sympathize with that. And then you figure out, well, what can you do in response? We live here in a community. None of us have our family here. And so we have to look out after one another. So think about what other people need. Look around and see if you can provide it. Don't wait for them to ask. And that way you get yourself ready to do that extrapolation in the meditation. Because extrapolation is an important part of the meditation. Realizing that what you see here right now applies to all beings. We have this body, we have these mental events that are in constant stressful not self. No matter where you go in the cosmos, all beings are going to have the same issue. The more you're able to extrapolate like that, the, the more you're willing to let go of your desires to go here, go there, be this, be that. So it is an important skill in meditation, so you want to develop it in daily life. In the same way when we have guests coming, you want to think about when someone comes here newly, what do they need? They, they don't know what to do, they don't know how things are run around here. Somebody has to explain it to them. We don't have a appointed welcomer. Someone proposed to John Sawat one time that at Wat Pu they have a welcomer. He said, look, and people should learn how to be welcoming all the time. So if you see somebody coming new and you don't see anybody else going to see them, well, you go to see them. See what they need, what they have come for. Make them feel welcome. After all, showing respect and welcoming guests, as the Buddha said, means that you're on the verge of nirvana. It seems like a big leap, but it is connected, as I said. When you meditate, you're going to be seeing things in your own mind, you're seeing your own suffering, seeing what you're doing to cause suffering, and you see other beings have the same sufferings. It opens your heart, gives you some more compassion, but at the same time it makes you realize, I don't want to be reborn anywhere as anything. So you see it all form, feelings, perceptions. The Fabrications, consciousness, near and far, subtle and blatant, they all have these same qualities. They're in constant stress from them. They don't deserve to be called self. And when you see how large that realization can be, how far it can extend, you might be willing to abandon some of your attachments. So there is a, there is a connection. Learn how to see the similarity between your heart and their heart your needs, their needs. Now, having some empathy, that's how you make the connection between simple ac actions of kindness to one another and the goal. So it's not just a matter of manners, it's a part of the larger training of the mind as well. Think about Sariputta when he first saw Asaji. It was Asaji's manners that inspired him to want to ask to want to find out, to want to learn the Dharma. So your manners can have a good impact on other people, as, is, as they are part of training your own mind. So let's keep this point in mind. We're here as a community, so we look after one another, but we're also part of a larger community. We're also representatives of the Dharma, so you want to represent it well. <laughs>